I'm Danny. I'm one of the founders of Jam.dev, and I'm based here in San Francisco. We help anyone, we help 100,000 people around the world uh, report bugs to engineers in a way that helps them debug faster. We've helped people solve more than 2 million bugs now, um, and now we're on to the next 2 million, 10 million, 200 million bugs. Every single one of our users is someone who's trying to shape some corner of the world through software through the web. Like whether it's education or healthcare or financial, they're all trying to make a difference in that corner of the world and they're doing so by building for the web. Well, of course, by connecting everything, um, there's we also connect bad actors too. And so we spend a lot of time making sure that everything is buckled down, very secure. And so that's one of the challenges. Um, but in terms of opportunity, I get to work with incredible people all over the world um, who I otherwise would not have met. And as the internet connects more of us, as it helps translate between even language barriers, um, I'm really excited that we're able to build a company where we can hire literally anyone, anywhere, anyone who wants to join us on the mission and is gonna work really hard with us to do that. Like, we get to work with them to do that. Jam is more important today than it was five years ago because as, as more of the world is coming online, as we have remote work and we're, you know, uh, we're working from our phones, working from all sorts of network conditions all over the planet, uh, the, the bar for quality is just higher for every company that's online. And quality is now more than ever correlated to revenue for software companies. And that's why tools like Jam that help you ship better software uh, are, are, are more important today. Look, most people who have reported a bug to an engineer have had the experience of, you know, you put all the screenshots and the JIRA ticket, and then the engineer opens the JIRA ticket, and then they write, it works fine on my end, and then they close the ticket. It's like, it's so frustrating, because you know there's a real issue for the customer, and the engineer wants to help, but they just don't have enough information uh, to repro the issue. And so we're trying to put that to an end. Like, engineer's time is so valuable, you should be able to solve issues immediately and then get back to building what's next, because Software is what's changing the world so rapidly, like the more time engineers get to build new features, like the faster the world evolves. About a year ago, we started to see engineers, when they get bugs reported to them in Jam, they copy paste the errors from Jam and they put it into ChatGPT. And we want to streamline everything about the bug fixing process. And so we brought ChatGPT into Jam. And instead of in the old world, you'd open like, you know, 14 uh, like Chrome tabs in order to debug something. And you look through every Stack Overflow tab. Now you're prompted with, here's how AI would solve this and where you might look in your code base. AI helps us do more for our customers. It's super, super exciting. But more than that, the promise of AI for all of our customers is that they'll be able to deliver more features. They'll be able to do more with a small team. But that actually means that the surface area of their software is bigger, and so there's more stuff to fix and maintain and iterate on, and so the need for Jam becomes greater. Like a slow communication cycle in the AI age uh, is just, it's a non-starter, it's too expensive. So you have to streamline that bug communication. I'm so optimistic. For one thing, the, the amount of opportunity that the internet is bringing to the world through access to education and information, access to services, and access to jobs is just super, super exciting. I grew up in Mountain View, California. I grew up in the Silicon Valley. And it used to, and this, the meaning of Silicon Valley was this was a place where, where a lot of tech startups were being started. But that's not really how the world works today. Because of the internet, people are able to join forces to build amazing things wherever they are in the world. And that is so freaking awesome. Um, but I think the internet is also changing in other ways. Like up until now, the more you use the internet, the more useful it was for you. I think in the future, the less you use the internet, the more useful it will be for you. And that's because the internet is gaining intelligence with AI and it's going to be able to operate in the background and it's going to be um, able to do things for you without you interacting with it right in that moment. That makes it so that it powers you in your day to day, allows you to spend time in the real world, um, but you don't have to always be in front of a screen to use it.
There are a lot of startups building AI agents and it's so amazing where the world is headed. You could imagine something like in the future, you're walking around, you have your AirPods in for example, and instead of uh, you having to ask Siri for something, ask an agent to get you something. You could imagine you're on your way to the next meeting, the AI agent knows where you are, says, you'll need to turn here, and while you're on your way, let me prep you with what you should know, what you should think about before the next meeting. In the past, the internet was a place you would go to. Like think in the 90s, you would log online and then you'd come back to the real world. And now it's it's even more fuzzy, right? Like, do you go to the internet? Like I spend all day in the internet, like my team's in Slack. But I think that trend will continue onwards where the internet is not a place you go, but it's something that powers the real world as well. I think the internet in its like prime form is twofold. One that spreads opportunity all over the globe so that anyone who's hardworking, determined, and, and wants to impact the world positively can do so um, and, and build tools to do so. Um, and, and two, that it empowers us to build real connection in the real world. Um, and, and, and that rather than spending our time alone on a screen, it's, it's a force that, that brings us all together. Look, definitely there's an energy here in San Francisco. Like, for example, tonight we're hosting Tech Talks on Cloudflare's roof, and more than 500 people tried to sign up for it. Like, the wait list is hundreds of people's long. And so there's this energy to build here that's really special. And like, uh, last week, the whole Jam team went to Bogota and Colombia um, to do a work offsite, and we met some users, and they all told us, like, most of their friends are not in tech. There's not that just, like, there's not that same level of, it's not a hub in the same way. And so, yes, there's still meaning to the Silicon Valley. Yes, there's still meaning to people coming together all around the topic of software, but how we've built our team at Jam is it's people from all over the world. Whoever wants to contribute to the cause of helping software be produced faster um, and, and is gonna work hard and, and be on the mission with us, like, we're in it. Jam is all built on Cloudflare. Like, we use Stream, we use Workers, we use every Cloudflare product, and we absolutely love it. Like, what an amazing product to get to build on top of. Yes, actually, the way we do product development at Jam is what we learned from Dane, who runs the emerging technologies team here at Cloudflare. So, uh, on Dane's team, they do something that most teams don't, which is they built zero to one products. And they have a special formula for doing so. That's what we use at Jam now too. The first step is you build a prototype that's meant to be thrown away. And the reason for that is you learn more from a prototype than you do from a PRD. And so you write throwaway code so it's fast, but you can get something in hand and just start using it and learn. So step one, prototype. Step two, you discard the prototype and then you build what you actually wanted to build. Um, and uh, and you get it to something that the team itself can use. And no external customers use it until it's good enough for the team. So there are iteration cycles there. Step three is a customer beta, and step four is a launch. We learned it from Cloudflare, and we do it now at Jam. <laughs>